Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Forest Heights Collegiate for the Waterloo County Senior Boys Volleyball Championships between the number five place team, the Upstart Eastwood Rebels, and the number one ranked team in the province, the Forest Heights Trojans. Hello, my name is Russell Ocean. I'll be doing the play-by-play, -play, and my friend and colleague is Mr. Randy Thompson. Randy, Hi, Russ. welcome back. How are you? Well, pleasure after? always to work with you. These, Randy, you uh, were talking to, to the uh, coach of the Four Size Trojans, Paul Pavin. Uh, what words of wisdom did he have for, t for you today? Well, uh, I asked him initially if he had uh, a difficulty being ranked first and all the pressures that go with that. He's been, uh, his team's been ranked first pretty well throughout the entire uh, season, and there's a lot of giant killing going on and so on. And uh, I think Paul put it uh, succinctly by saying uh, he'd rather be at the top looking down. Well, he's so. legitimate. Uh, with my team, we, we, we ran into them uh, at the six different tournaments, and, and they won uh, every tournament they were in except the one. Mark Gatto, their outstanding setter, set the serve. Eastwood, look out for number 16, number Kelvin Hounsell. He is a terrific ball player. Here he is right here. And a wipe off off number 12, Dave Money, and that's exactly Eastwood's game plan right there. Number 16, Kelvin Hounsell will see the ball a lot. And uh, coming into serve is number 11, Mike White for Eastwood. This is a, this is a tough team. Forest Heights had better not underestimate them. Good pass by Chris Boyk. There's a quick 31. Great play by Spetko on the back row. A free ball coming off from Forest Heights in the back row from White. There's a quick to Hounsell. He tips. That's, that's uh, not characteristic. Back row attack to McRae. Blocked by Hounsell and great defense by Chris Boyk. Outside to Chris Boyk into the net. Four hits. Good start, eh, Randy? Really is. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of emotion in these first uh, four or five points of the uh, first game, uh, Russ, where they'll think any, any one of the two teams is going to dominate. And then I think uh, both teams will get a little bit of the crowd jitters out. Oh, excellent block there. Uh, there's the back set. Uh, Chris Boyk, an outstanding hitter for Forest Tights, but right into the big block of Calvin Hounsell. I'll predict that they will not be using that play very often as the match wears on. Two nothing for Eastwood early. Mike White continues to serve. Nice pass by Kevin Schonk. There it is outside the Schonk. And off the dig of number 15, Kevin Barker. Kevin Schonk, another veteran of this team. Outstanding offside player for Forest Tights. I think it's uh, important to note here that uh, the quality of senior boys volleyball in this region has been outstanding. Uh, the, the winners of Wixa boys, senior boys, Volleyball. The last uh, two of the last three years have gone on to win uh, the All Ontario Championship at Offside. Number and 18, Sean Crane from Eastwood is setting it off the block of Hounsell and 15, Kevin Barker. And there again is uh, the huge middle of Forest Heights will be a big factor today. Dave Money and, and Warren McRae look for them to hit a lot of quick balls. As Dave Money, number 12 on your screen, back to serve. Oh, a pretty good pass from number 11 White. There's a first ball of. And it's off the block, and at one point, I'm sorry, it's off the net. One point for Forest Heights there. I think one of the things you're going to be uh, looking at, we're going to see a lot of, is Warren McRae and Dave Money. And those of us who uh, follow the uh, Wix uh, championships over the years will remember uh, these two guys as rather spindly young fellows in junior that were a little gangly and uncoordinated. But uh, now we're seeing machines out there. Calvin Hansel with his uh, spin serve. There's a 31 again, out of bounds. 31 meaning it's a, like a shoot quick. And uh, Warren McRae hit it out of bounds. Both teams are making a, a few characteristics errors, especially from Forest Heights. It's now three to one for Eastwood. Hansel again serving, but on the net. Net serve just touched the top of the net. Good call by uh, head referee Hugh Brown there. Um, oh, he's a veteran, he's wily. He's got to the, still has the good eyes. Number four, Kevin Schonk into the net again. What do you think, Randy? Too many really, I'm already. really disappointed with the way Forest Heights has come out here. I mean, they've made more unforced errors than I was led to believe they've made all season already. Um, so perhaps maybe it's the crowd and, uh, and the jitters that have uh, got to them, but they're certainly not playing at the level that uh, I'm sure has justified their number one ranking in the province. Jeff Shawns for um, uh, Eastwood serving long. Eastwood's got to take advantage of this low by Forest Heights. Oh, Calvin Hounsell, uh, not a good pass. And here comes a free ball. Let's see what Forest Heights does with it. There's a step around here to Warren McRae, and it's a kill. That's going to be a tough ball for them to block. I know you don't like that play, Randy, but with that big Warren McRae, that's not a bad play. Well, it's not, especially if you have a right-handed middle hitter coming around to that. You'll see right now the Forsyth has their setter in the front row, so there's only two hitters that he can set to, and if you can move one from one hitting zone to another, then that's that's a nice side out by Eastwood there. Kevin Barker for Eastwood. That's a 
Eastwood has already used their middle on two occasions, which is a lot more than they normally do. And if they get some attack out of their middle and give Calvin Hounsell some, some rest, especially when he's in the back row, this could be a long match. Uh, number 15, Kevin Barker is a sixth service rotation. It's 3-2 now for Eastwood. Nice pass by Fillion. Again, outside to Chris Boyk. Good pass by Calvin Hounsell. And Spetko outside to number 11. White off the block. Nice dig again by the back row. Chris Boyk in between Hounsell and number one Shantz for the kill. Eastwood's got to dig that ball, I think, Randy, won't you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, uh, that was hit with a lot of force, but also a very predictable path. And the back row defense has got to pick that up. Tough pass Quick pass. There. Calvin Hansel blocked by number. That's a difficult ball for a hitter hitting it. It's sort of off balance at the attack line against a big block like money, isn't it? I think one of the strategies here the Forest Heights maybe should employ is when they're playing a team that is so dominated by one player as Hansel is, serve to him, uh, initially set over him, make him play as much as he possibly can in the first game or so and tire him out. Uh, yep. And just, just see how uh, far he can go in the match. It's 3-3 now. Spetko for uh, the setter from Eastwood. As outside again to Chris Boyk, into the block. Nice recovery by Eastwood. And comes giving up a free ball though. That's, that's dangerous against this Forest Heights team. Outside again to Chris Boyk. Again, a nice touch by number 18, Sean Crane. But they keep giving up the free balls. Outside again, Chris Boyk's getting arm weary and there it is, a kill off of number 15. Barker, you can't give Forest Heights, they have too many weapons. They, and you know, the nice thing about it all is their best weapon is the mill, and they haven't hardly used that at all. I mean, Dave Money was way up there on all those sets that went to Boyk, and that's why Boyk is getting those free swings out there. Money is freezing the middle block. Oh, a tight touch set and, and stuffed by Kevin Shaw, but that was a difficult set for Calvin Hounsell. It is now 4-3 for Forest Tights. Mark Gatto, their outstanding setter serving. Nice to see how Mark oh, Gatto Oh, terrific pass by number 15, Kevin Barker. And uh, Forest Heights is handling. Oh, are they calling a lift, or is that a net ball? I think that's a, I think that's a lift that's called by uh, the head referee there. I'm Did always uh, always ambivalent whether that ball ought to be called a lift, but uh, certainly is not a clean. Uh, oh. Forest Heights is called again out of rotation. Right, coming in too soon. It's that an interesting. I'd like you to take a look, Andy, uh, Randy, at the uh, at Eastwood. Their setter, uh, their best hitter, is opposite their setter. I think that's a good idea. That means that. Um, uh, that when their best hitter's in the front row, he's there with three hitters at all times. And that freezes uh, the other uh, side's front row so that he's probably never going to look at more than a two-man block and often a one-man block. So it's a good and idea. And in addition, he's always in a good position to hit the backcourt attack. For sure, for sure. Okay, they're trading a lot of missed serves. It's 5-4 for Eastwood. A sloppy game so far. Chris Berg, boy, back to serve. Nice pass, oh, average pass by Mike Church. There's Hounsell again, but it's set way too tight. That's too tough, uh, as good a hitter as yeah. he is against um, a block like Dave Money. Yeah, you have uh, zero options when the ball set high, tight, and in the inside of the court. 5-5, five, five. ball is served out again. Forest Heights, I think, is trying Jeez. to serve too tough yeah. right now. And coming back in number 18, uh, Sean Crane. This is uh, Calvin Hounsell has one more rotation in the front row. Oh, good pass out of uh, Chris Boyk. There's a, a quick attack. Nice block by Calvin Hounsell. Good play by Hounsell there. There's a quick attack, again, blocked by Dave Money. Hounsell again setting tight, and yeah. he had no chance again. That, that, that's a death set. It really is. Uh, I mean, the uh, middle player there, number 15, uh, should have set in front of himself to the weak side player. That's the easier, uh, higher percentage set to make. Uh, I mean, even though it's Calvin Hounsell uh, behind him, that was not a good selection. There's a back, they gave it to the middle guy. A nice play, we saw Kelvin coming out of rotation two, so, so, position two. Every, the whole Forsyth team went with him in number 15, Mike Church. Uh, Kevin Barker, I'm sorry, put it away. That's a good tactic for Eastwood, I think. This is where Forsyth should score with Kelvin in the back row, we'll see. Good block by number 15, Kevin Barker. Yep. Excellent job. It's 6-5 for Eastwood. I'm really impressed with the way this Eastwood team has come out of the gates. Uh, they come into the home gym of the number one team in the province, and they're up 6-5 in game one. There's a tip. Oh, a great play by Mike Church. Boy, he's doing it all. It's really great to see. Uh, Eastwood was fifth. They beat the, the fourth-place team in five, and then they came in and beat the fifth-place team in the province, Waterloo, in their own gym. Uh, Well-coached team to, to play hard 
under the pressure of these conditions, and they've, they've maintained that intensity. It's really well done. There's the backcourt attack by Calvin Hounsel. And it's... So, uh, that's a type of ball, and that's a type of shot that we should watch as the match goes on. I mean, he's pumped up, he's fresh, he's ready to go. He made a really great athletic shot there. As the match wears on, we'll see if they continue to go to that, how he reacts to that set. Jeff Sean serving for Eastwood as they're le leading. There's uh, McRae sitting behind him. Number 11, Mike White. Eastwood has a superior, has a, is a really big team. And, and that net game is a big advantage as 11 went over Mark Gatto and wiped it off. That was a nice play. I'm impressed by Eastwood's effort so far. I am, and I'm similarly unimpressed by Forrest Heights' efforts, and I wouldn't want to particularly be a fly on a knee pad in that uh, timeout that Forrest Heights is having right now with Coach Paul Pavin. Um, I really think that uh, Forrest Heights is um, making the pretty plays, but they're not, like, uh, giving it their best shot. They're not, like, hitting as hard as they can. They're not pushing themselves to the level that they are accustomed to playing at in big matches, such as this one. So I think maybe a little uh, gut check and a little reminder was what uh, Coach Pavin and you have sent to, out to his troops. And you have to give Eastwood a lot of credit here. That's a big front court with Mike Ch uh, with Kevin Barker, 15, and number 11, Mike White. They're getting well up there. Yep. Uh, we'll see if Forsyth can exploit the small block of number three, uh, Rob Spetko, right now. And there it is again. See where McCray goes down the line. There it was. Yeah. Yep. I mean, there's nothing you can do. You've got an excellent, an excellent setter like uh, Rob Spetko there, but they're just he just is not as tall as Warren McRae. That's just what can you do? That's got to be uh, probably one of the plays that Coach Pavin called in the timeout. Just set it up over the uh, short setter and hit it down the line. Okay, that's not a good pass, and already here comes another free ball. Oh, that's a very difficult play for number 11. He he was uh, he just tried to get it over, and that's again the huge the huge block in the middle of Forest Heights is starting to. Starting that's to a really good play by Warren McRae. There he's doing something positive and with a free ball. You normally back off the net, but he went up there to block it. A great hit. Oh, they're calling it out. out. Number 11, Mike White made an excellent hit over the top, over Mark, Mike Margetto and, and going away from the big block of Forest Heights. I thought that was an excellent uh, shot there. It was certainly a good selection as well as uh, both setters aren't, you know, the tallest uh, players out in the court. Certainly a go-to strategy would be to set it high to the power side and tight. Uh, not a good choice by the set of Eastwood. I mean, uh, a running back set for, for a backcourt attack, yeah. I think. Uh, good call for a timeout yeah. too, uh, Russ. Uh, Dave I mean, Living and uh, Chris Tippin, I think are gonna straighten Rob Spetko out there. I think the big thing that, th that they're gonna look at is for them just to play their game. Don't do anything that they, they haven't had to do all season. And that just is not a play that should be in their, in their playbook. <laughs> oh, not at all, not at all. I mean, with a bad pass like that, you just jade up to the power or the left-hand side of the court and keep the ball in play. Play good front row defense and you never know what happens. They're doing really well in the front row Eastwood is in terms of causing Forest Heights maybe not to hit the ball as hard and hit it more sa uh, safer than they would otherwise. So yeah, I, agree. I, think you've, I think you've really got to play the percentages as much as you can when you're playing a team that, you know, on paper is so much better than you. Oh, the, again, he's trying to shoot the middle to, uh, to Kevin Barker when, again, as, as if your advice would have been just to throw it out to Mike White. Mike White's Absolutely. doing a good job, and yeah, yeah. it's uh, two bad decisions by the setter right there. It's, uh, it's, there's a good set outside to Mike White, and there's the hit. Oh, just, just long. He's uh, it's had some bad luck there. There's a bit of a slippery slide happening here. Forest Heights has just uh, scored four consecutive points, yeah. actually five. They were it's, down 7-5. It's 10-7, and mostly on, on Eastwood areas. Eastwood has to stay within themselves. They're good enough but they're trying to do a little bit too much. It's a good serve. Good defense by Kevin Schonk. There's a step around off the yeah, McRae, yeah. and now Forrest Heights is starting to have it their way. They're, they, yeah. uh, it's, it's difficult to all give them any points. All of that was set up with a really tough serve into the two hole of the court, and there's there it is again. right there. Oh, there's a good pass. There's going to be to White in the middle, and it's yeah. blocked by number five, Warren McRae. Yeah. The but ball was set too tight, I thought. That's, that's, an, uh, that's absolutely perfect. That's where the blocker should be when the ball served over there. Gang up on that middle pair, because if he's going to set out power, Warren's got plenty of time to get out there. Power guy comes in. Oh, bad Never. call. Bad call. You see how all of the power, uh, uh, all of the blockers for Forest Heights, they're just ganging up on the left-hand side of the court there. Yeah. And, You've got to uh, spread it out. What, you got, uh, what I think here would be a good play for Eastwood is to take... Uh, their middle player, who's playing great, Kevin Barker, jerk him out to the weak side, have the center set out of the middle so he has either one side of the court, yeah. one perimeter, or the other perimeter yeah. to go through. No matter which one he chooses, for sure, he's going to uh, have, at worst, a two-man block. Yeah. And uh, I kind of like the idea about sending a, uh, a back set to uh, Barker. 
and, and it also opens really up well. the middle for a, for a middle attack from Calvin Hounsell out of the middle. So you've got really three yeah, attacks here. Yeah, yeah. But this 13-7 for four is tight. So there's as Philly and it says serves six points oh, there. And oh, I got tough serve. serving. Oof. There's the backward attack. Oh. He was on the line. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah he's good too call. bad. Very good call by the uh, uh, Hugh Brown. I get you. He's got the good eyes. He really does. He's just been around so long. He just can't be fooled. And it's game point already for Forest Tights. Boy, this game got out, got out of hand quickly, didn't it? For this one rotation. Now it's not set wide enough. There's a tip, but Dave Money read it beautifully to Chris Boyk. Oh, terrific dig by number oh, yeah. 18, oh. Sean Crane. But it, it it went out of bounds. Randy, this was a. It was 5-5, and suddenly it's seven. It was 15-7. Yeah. Um, it was 7-5 for Eastwood at one yes. point, Russ, and then. Uh, you uh, you know you just blink and call two timeouts and uh, bingo you they got stuck the they got stuck in the one service rotation at any rate at the end of game one Forest Ice defeating Eastwood 15-7 we'll be right back for game two thank you ladies and gentlemen as we see Paul Pavin on the screen and uh, the number one substitute Frumpy waving to us it's one nothing for Forest Heights in a match that was really close and Randy we suddenly suddenly was 15-7 before his tights. Uh, you call it a juggernaut. It really is. Uh, all of a sudden, 7-5, uh, uh, timeout called by uh, Coach Pavin of the Trojans. Uh, a few things said that, thank goodness we couldn't read lips about that. And then all of a sudden, uh, 10 straight points, sir. Uh, I think uh, I think that Forest Heights has their mind back into the game here. Yeah, I, uh, you made the good point that Forest Heights seemed to stack their block and Eastwood kept setting into the middle, into that big, huge block. And Eastwood uh, may have to s spread it around a little bit. And I thought they had a really excellent effort out of number 15, Kevin Barker, yeah. especially. But he was, he, he, they, he, they took, Forsyth seemed to take him right out of the match. He was not effective anymore. And, um, well, we'll see. In the second game, uh, Forsyth's again starting in their, when they're receiving serve, we'll always start with um, Mark Gatto in position two, setting Dave Money and Chris Boyk. Uh, Chris Boyk is an outstanding player. They, they have just, they, this is a team of outstanding players. I'll, I'll be quite frank with you. I think this is the all-star team in, in the league, uh, other than maybe Kelvin Hounsell. But this is really an excellent ball team. Um, really impressed with their all-round play. I mean, uh, these big guys, they can not only do the job at the net, but uh, they play good backcourt defense as well. They really do. Um, Warren McRae stepping in. A nice pass. There's the outside to Chris Boyk. Off the top of the block. A nice dig by... Um, Rob Spetko, terrific reactions, but he just wasn't able to get the ball up. And uh, Mark Gatto back to serve for, uh, serve for Forest Heights. In the front row, we've got Kelvin Hounsell, who will always start in uh, four for Eastwood. They're going to give him three whacks at it. Oh, weak pass. Good call by Kevin Schonk. Kevin Barker, nice pass to Spetko. Mistake to do set. Back set to Kevin Schonk. Oh, that's a, a you can't a, a it, if you're hit. you know we were talking in between games Russ about what Eastwood's got to do. Eastwood's got to keep Hounsell out on the power side and keep him out there. Don't bring him into the middle because he's for sure going to be seeing forehands. He's going to be seeing a low set too. There's a tough like set that. for Chris Boyd. That's not a good uh, uh, no. poor again poor set selection by Margato to block. It's set right in the big hands of Kelvin Hounsell. I don't think he'll do that very much more. It's one nothing now for Eastwood. Number 11, Mike White serving. Oh, nice pass. Outside to Kevin Schonk, off the top of the block of number one, uh, Jeff Schantz. Spetko runs that down, oh. and he just throws it into the other uh, that, team's court. That was a tough that's, play. That's probably a preoccupation that uh, the Eastwood setter has with trying to get the ball to Hounsell. I mean, the right spot there would just be to bump it up straight and let the back row guy give it a whack. Oh, nice pass by Kevin. There it is. Barker off the top of the block. Gatto outside to uh, Philly in the left-hander. A terrific block by one and nine. Number nine, Kevin Kleihauer. He's a... Uh, He's playing this game, and uh, that was a terrific block. The ball was set tight, but he did a good job of, of, uh, of sealing the block there. It's always tough for a left-handed person to be hitting from the left-hand side of the court, but nevertheless, it was an excellent block. Clayhower serving. Ophelian pops it into the middle of the court, and it's going to be a free ball. Let's see if Eastwood can take advantage of this. Oh, what a terrible play out of the back row. Great effort by number nine, Clayhower, to keep it alive. Good discipline. Oh, back court yeah. attack to Shank, and again, Calvin Hounsell just buries it. Are they, are, are they challenging him, Randy? What do you think? Well, if they're going to challenge him, I don't think they should challenge him with those back flare sets. They're going to challenge him, uh, challenge him with high balls and give the hitter some more options. Number nine, Clyhauer serves a nice pass by Warren McCray. And there's the middle attack, a 31, nice. and Barker didn't follow it. Uh, it means that the ball was, the middle hitter sort of took a step towards the outside, and there was no block there. That's right. That was a really nice pass uh, by the Forest Heights player on that on Number that 12, play. Dave Money coming back to serve again. Forest Heights has started off slowly. Down to nothing. 
There's a middle attack. No, oh, it's, it's it's set long. No touch. Right idea. I kind of like that uh, that side selection uh, on that particular play. No, just wasn't able to connect. Keep that middle. Nice player. pass by Calvin Hounsell. There's the back set. Off That's the block. It. That's it. I really think Hounsell can have a lot of fun if he uh, is set on the perimeters of the court, either on the far left yeah. side, the power side, or the near side to us, uh, the weak side, the right side. Very difficult to turn his, he's got so much power to turn his ball in. This is again, he's back row, we'll see what happens. There, ah, it's a lift different ball game when you set Kevin Sean against a, a different block, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh, absolutely, <laughs> he just jumped all over that one, and yet, again, I'm not sure whether that was, uh, uh, that was a nice sort of uh, message set, but I think now, uh, in this rotation, you're going to be seeing a lot of balls set out to Boyk on power because he's hitting over uh, Rob Spector. Spector is a front row setter now. Kevin Schonk, an outstanding player for Forest Heights. He's had a great career, Schonk has. There's Kevin Barker. There it is again. He's really impressed so far. He's not afraid of that big bob. He's hitting against Warren McRae. Two gold medals in the regional summer games team. Probably why, as, as, as developed and probably one of the most elite players in the province. And Barker's going right at him. Good to see. Oh, good pass by Kevin Sean. Outside to McRae. High ball. Oh, no oh. chance. Oh, boy. Randy, in your best days, well, you buried that one? <laughs> well, I, I uh, would have dug it, Russ. I would have dug it. But, oh, uh, I mean, it. That, was, uh, that was the biggest mismatch out on the court. Uh, Warren McRae hitting over Rob Speckle. I mean, that's just a huge uh, mismatch. There's a quick attack to McRae. And I really like that about Forest Heights. They're one of the few teams I see that will run that quick attack off a of transition so quickly. That was excellent, excellent volleyball right there. That takes hours and hours and almost years and years of coaching and practice to train a team to even think about doing something like that off of those balls. And Kevin Barker, he gets this. He says, take that. He's cutting the ball back. Dave Money not able to dig that ball. I think Pavin thinks he should have. And it's 2-2. Again, Eastwood's hanging tough early again. They've got some weapons themselves. Barker's in the back row. Gatto, right on top of the net. There's Chris Boyk setting off the net. Oh, and Council not able to dig that. Net fall on, on um, Eastwood anyway. Again, even though that particular ball wasn't set close to the net, uh, Boyk had so many uh, op hitting opportunities because the block uh, just wasn't as strong and as aggressive as he might otherwise have seen. And Chris Boyk puts it down. 3-2, you don't want to do that. You've got to pass the ball. You can't give uh, Forsythe those free ones. You know, there's a, there's a, volleyball is not a gentleman's sport. When you see a mismatch, uh, you go after that person and you keep going after that person and you don't let up. Again, they're say, they keep jamming the middle. And oh. number six, Mark Gatto buries that one off of number 11, Mike White. Good athletic move uh, there by Gatto. Um, a nice little 360 to turn uh, in the air make the block. One more rotation to get Kelvin in the front row. Let's see if Eastwood can get out of it. There's the back he's row attack, over. but again, he's way, uh, way over the net. Uh, I really the, the like the, line. the one thing I like about that play is that Forest Heights had two blockers going up to block that back row attack. Sometimes with inexperienced teams, everyone will freeze in the front row and stay on their feet. They shouldn't. They should go up and try and block that ball. Uh, again, nice pass. Uh, the Eastwood. There's outside to Mike White. Good hit. Yep. And it's in. Forest Heights is, I guess with that big block, they don't expect people to go over their block and, uh, and they're leaving that big center back hole open. What happened there, what Mike did on that play was he jumped and then the ladies hit almost till he was coming down. And then by that time, the Forest Heights block, which was up so high, had, had come down. There's a back row attack from Warren McRae. He kind of sliced that. And, and again, Eastwood not able to dig that ball. It's 5-2 as Mark Gatto goes back to serve for Forest Heights. And we have uh, Kelvin Hounsell in the front row. I got a feeling he may get this ball. Oh, a terrible pass. Oh, that's, uh, yes, that's a violation yeah. on behalf of the Forest Heights uh, player there. That's just a mental well. error. Yeah, uh, Dave Money. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's a good sign, though. I mean, he's being aggressive, and he's making an error of commission. He's trying to do too much, and that's okay. It's when your uh, team doesn't go for it. That's when you get concerned. Uh, I don't believe that ball was set behind him, but those big arms of his, he just popped that down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you and do? <laughs> the ball landed in the back three feet of the court, yeah. and I think that's a really important message for, you know, aspiring volleyball players. You don't have to bury it inside the attack line, which is only three meters back from the center line. Those last three meters of the court, that's where most of the balls fall with when elite players hit. To see a six foot seven player uh, be that agile is uh, pretty impressive. There's a back set. Uh, again, East was trying to do some different things. There's, a, there's that quick attack off a of transition. Great play, Kevin Barker in the back row, but another free ball. Outside oh, nice to Affilian, and there's that 
What I like about Fillion's approach being a left-hander, he comes straight in more and he gives himself a good angle to hit. Yep, yep. Uh, when you're a lefty, you want to come in so almost you have your, your major uh, shot is down the line and then you can always rip it across court uh, with the last minute adjustment to your shoulders. Oh, not a good pass for Kevin Barker. There's a back set again uh -oh. to Kevin. Oh, and Kelvin Hounsel oh. was going with, there was a free hit there. Kelvin Hounsel was, was guessing uh, middle hit and he didn't, uh, he didn't stay with his man. But Welcome to the maturity of Mark Gatto. Like yeah. two years ago in junior ball, uh, he would not have made that set. He just didn't have the court awareness or the presence to see what was going on on the other side of the court so that he could identify that there was an overshift in the front line and therefore go to that free guy. Uh, he said, without looking, two shanks behind him, and uh, it, was a, it was a free hit. It was a beautiful, beautiful play. Well, the score is 7-2 to for, East, uh, for Forest Heights, but Eastwood is not playing a bad game. It's, it's just that Forest Heights really is that good. They've, they've beaten every team in the province, They've handled them easily. Um, let's not, uh, they, they would do this to any team in Wuxa. Uh, Eastwood has, has won the right to be here. They're legitimate semi-finalists, uh, and they're playing a good match. They're just playing a, a, a really excellent team, and, and it's fun to watch them. Outside the Kelvin Hounsel, again, great, great play. And, oh, it's in snapping. by Warren McRae, but they're getting touches. Uh, Hounsel's not able to put the ball over the block like he, like he could against other weaker players, but Money is being 6'7", he's just too tall. And a great athletic play by Warren McRae, a 6'5 player making that kind of an effort. Outside, down the line, and there's Margato with a, de with a dig. Nice play for Kevin Barker. There's a middle attack. Kevin Schunk to be sitting outside. Oh, sure. sitting on the net. And, oh, that's unlucky. Kind of a uh, cheap break that uh, ended uh, probably the best rally of this match so far, Russ. 9-2 for Forest Tights. Everything's going their way. A terrible set. Happened to fall in. Again, for, uh, keep going to Council. He try, he's tried something oh, different every time. Fillion. And Fillion made a great play. And it's off the block, out of bounds, and it's uh, one point for Forest Heights, 10 to 2. You and notice Council has hit in three different areas in the last three hits, and each one of them has been dug. Yep. Terrific defense by Forest Heights. People forget the, how good defensively they are. Council again is getting arm weary. He's blocked again by Money. There it is, and it's a, there it is. He set it inside, and he got, it, got inside the block. Great he's hit. a gamer, that yeah. Hounsel. He's a gamer. You got to hand it to him. He's been blocked four or five times, and he still keeps pounding. Yep. That's really impressive. Ten to two for Forest Heights. This is Eastwood's best front line rotation here. Uh, we'll number one is Shantz, and number fifteen Barker and sixteen Hounsel. Yep. See how they do. Fillion rolls it down the line. Good spot to hit it. Outside to Hounsel again. He goes down the line and again. A ghetto with a terrific dig. Shantz rolls it over. Spetko setting the middle to Barker. Money gets hands on that one. Out, uh, back set, he fooled me. Uh, fooled Kevin. <laughs> There's a middle attack, great push, but again, Good the agility of Warren McRae, nothing's fallen in four tights. They're trading free balls. Spetko good going rally. back set to Sean's, not a good play. Oh. I think there, I think that was a really good set. You just have to be prepared yeah. at all times to get the ball set to you. And there, I just don't think Jeff Schantz was prepared. I don't think he was ready to hit that ball. Yeah, I have to hand it to Rob Spetko. He's, he's, he's seeing that Calvin Hounsel is not getting all the kills, and he's trying to move the ball around. His hitters just aren't used, I guess, to getting this many sets. Well, there's, a, again, Chris Boyk with a dig. Nothing has fallen on the forest tight side. Well oh. done, Chris Boyk. And Eastwood just can't match the just an all-round excellent team effort. A frumpy is in, uh, number 11. Uh, Jamie Ryle, a terrific substitute, a great backcourt player. And uh, he, he pulls an important role in this Forest Heights team. There's a nice play by Chris Boyk. There's a the middle attack, and boom, it's out of bounds. But there's a transition, quick attack off a transition. Well done. 11-2. Really, really impressed with the way Forest Heights has uh, picked up the level of their game right now. It's, uh, it's just a joy to watch them. Chris Boyk pops the ball up. Filling in, hitting the ball. It's long. And it's now 11-3. I think it's important here that Forest Heights uh, doesn't have any mental it, letdowns. Shonk's going to get this ball out over Shonk's, yeah. and there it is there. He's, uh, now that's experience yeah. for you, you know. I mean, when you look at what happened there, there's two guys up, uh, the set was well off the net, and yet the end result was Forest Heights wins a rally. That's a really good experience to shot there. Excellent Shonk. pass. And there's a 31, a great day. Kevin Schonk. Forest Heights is giving it. Oh, it's off the antenna by Mark Gatto. 
But I'll tell you right now, people keep saying how great Forest Heights is in the front row. The people don't realize that the, they are also the best defensive team. And that's a tribute to the Pal Pavin's coaching. He does not let them coach. That's just great defense. Number one, uh, Jeff Schantz back to serve for, for um, Eastwood. Great pass off of Boyk outside to McCray over the block. Oh, no, he cut it back. There's too many options. He's too big and he's too good. Yep. He could hit that ball down line just as easily. Yep. Uh, but he made, a, I mean, he made a good shot there. 11-3 as uh, number two, Mike Fillion serving. And he, he scored all those points with his, with his tough serve in the last game. Again, uh, there's a nice dig, by, uh, uh, tip by Mike White, and it's long as Warren McCray tried to, tried to hit the one spot. Went for too much there, uh, did Warren. Um, he was uh, running uh, towards our broadcast area, had to turn his body uh, 90 degrees in the air and then hit the balls that was coming across his body. Uh, he would have been much better advised to uh, make an aggressive volley to the one hole or the serving corner. Kevin Barker serving for, for Eastwood at 11-3. A good call, you could hear it out here. Chris Boyd called it and and that's, again, you see the good uh, court discipline of four sides. One player called it, and, and the player let it go. Yeah, now, yeah. That's I mean, really uh, well done. Especially in a match like this where, uh, although there isn't a lot at stake for both these teams, they're both going to Kawasa next week. But, you know, with all the crowd and everyone's excited and the bands are playing and buses are coming here, yeah. busloads of students and so on, it's good to know that those six players out there can block it out and talk to each other and say out or take it or mine or whatever. Uh, Good discipline. Chris Boyd just pounds it over Mike White. I, I, I have to hand it to Eastwood, though. I mean, they're not playing poorly. I mean, Forsyth is no. just beating them because they're a solid ball team. But uh, that last hit by, um, I think it was uh, Mike Mike White down the line was just, just excellent. Mark Gatto back to serve for Forest Heights. It's 11-3. Jeff Shawns pops it up outside uh, off the net. Again, Good. a nice wipe off. I think, that is was that Kelvin? Is that Kelvin? Yep. I, didn't, I couldn't tell. Yeah, Good hit. Was. And, uh, you know, the, I think an interesting statistic for those who are keeping statistics of this game is I don't think Eastwood's made a lot of unforced errors. I mean, there's been a there's lot of There's that 31 again. That's a, that's a big problem for a, um, a team like Eastwood who hasn't seen a lot of offenses that, that run different things. And that, that ball has been an automatic for Forest Heights today so far where the, the middle hitter steps outside and, and, and the Eastwood middle hitter is just not following him. Right. Chris Boyk serving. There's a short serve. That's really hurt Eastwood today, that short serve. Oh, that's on the net. Oh. oh. Money took his eye off the ball. Yeah, he <laughs> did. Uh, I think he was looking in the court where he wanted to put it, and uh, yeah. uh, he just got trapped in the air, quite frankly. Yeah. The ball was on top of him. 11-3 as, as Eastwood uh, is, is fighting gamely. They're playing each rally. They don't care about the score. There's a, a quick, there's an X on Shank, and again, number 15, uh, Kevin Barker. He's playing really well. He didn't, he didn't go for that fake at all, did he? It Not just, at all. He just wasn't able to turn it. Yep. Um, that was a very uh, tough set to run that X off where the um, weak side player comes around and hits behind the center uh, or middle player, but um, it worked out successfully in that instance. Nice play by Kevin Schunk. Yeah, Forrest Ice just won't let any balls drop. There's a nice roll shot, and I think Kelvin Hounsel is getting tired because that foul shit, I think, was his. Um, Yep, Forest Heights has gone out and challenged Hounsell uh, time and time again. They've served to him a lot, which is, you know, takes a lot of uh, energy um, out of a player when you have to pass a lot in the back row. Uh, they've uh, hit at him when he's in the front row. They haven't backed away, and uh, they've certainly keyed on him uh, as an attacker. Chris Boyk again pops the ball up outside to Kevin Schonk. Nice play in the back row, Mike White. Schonky setting it in the middle, a high ball. McCray doesn't a little bit with it. Oh, he said on the net. And poor uh, Hounsel got buried right there. He had no chance. Yeah. That and was 13-3. Uh, that, uh, that ball really should have been set over to the power side to, to Filiome rather than to McCray. But uh, Great gosh, we are splitting hairs here in, yeah. in uh, criticizing Forest Heights for that selection. Kelvin Hounsel, again, they served him and they tried to run an X, but Forest Heights is just king on him. You've got to give it to Barker once in a while uh, on the, the first ball because um, the, uh, Forsyth had three blockers going with Kelvin that time. It's now 14. That's the game point, a weak pass. 15-3 for Forsyth in the second game. And again, ladies and gentlemen, it's not that East was playing that badly. Uh, I, I suggest you put any Wixa team on the court and the same result. Eastwood, Eastwood I think, is playing a, a good match, but Forsyth is really that good. Yep, well, they're uh, quitting themselves very well out there, and they're keeping their unforced errors down very nicely, but uh, whew, they're going to have to start hitting winners and lots of them in Game 3. We'll, we'll, we'll be, be back, back for Game 3 in a few minutes.
the Forsythe. I'm Russ Volshin doing the play-by-play -play along with Randy Thompson in this uh, third game of the best three out of five Bucks of final, two nothing for Forsythe. Randy Thompson, you are the Eastwood coach. What would be your game plan? My game plan would be to keep Hounsel on the outside of the court uh, when he's in the front row. Uh, to set uh, maybe the first two or three balls in the middle to uh, Barker uh, or whoever the middle hitter is out there. But Kevin's had a good match. Yeah, and um, um, I would make a change uh, in terms of a blocking formation when uh, uh, the setter Rob Speckle is in the front row. Um, pull him back off the net and uh, get, uh, uh, get the middle player to slide over there. Just on a couple of times, I think uh, Forest Heights would, uh, that would be a, an adjustment that Forest Heights wouldn't be expecting. Mark Gatto serving for Forest Heights. Nice pass by uh, number 11, Mike White. And again, they're trying to run these quick stuff with Calvin. I'm not sure uh, they need to do that. He's, he's a terrific weapon when you just set him high outside. Yeah, when you, uh, when you set him quick, when you set him closer to the middle of the net, it takes away his hitting options. And he still has some, but fewer of them. Back set off the block of a floating Dave Money. That's a good tactic because you're getting the middle player floating and he's able to get wipe offs. Uh, 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 nice play by uh, number 11, Mike White. This Eastwood team is, is tough. If these, if these players are back next year, this could be a formidable team when they get some experience. Really, uh, really and truly, that's, uh, uh, that's for sure. I've, they're, uh, they've handled themselves with a lot of class and poise today. Uh, coming into the gym uh, of Forest Heights, and uh, they're acquitting themselves quite well here. Good try by Mike White. Again, Forest Heights just rolls it over. Each of their hitters seems to be able to, to do something with the ball rather than just sort of whack away at it. It's a, again, everything they do is, is just a evidence of just solid coaching. I don't know what else to say. A dynamite serve. Great pass by Mike White. Unfortunately, uh, it's a, a back row setter, and he, had to, he jumped up to play the ball. And it's now 3-0 for Forest Heights. Uh, boy, get into the jump serve again between uh, White and number eight, Jason Schultz. Now you've got to, if you're Eastwood, you've got to make an adjustment. Like, Boyd's hitting a very difficult serve, but he's hit all three of them right to the same spot. And, and that just, one's out of court, so I guess that's good news for Eastwood. But he hit every one of them right to the uh, one hole, and uh, if, if one person had just stood there and planted himself, there would have been an Sean easy Crane pass. serving for Eastwood. Good pass again from Chris Boyk. There's the attack, and he cuts it back. Uh, Dave Money. Again, he hit the ball cross court the last time, and then he puts it back into one, and he's going back to serve. You know, it, it's, it's really a pleasure to watch this Forest Heights team because I can remember broadcasting three or four years ago, and these guys were gangly, had grown too fast. Their coordination hadn't caught up with them. Uh, they looked awkward. Uh, they won back then, but uh, they didn't look pretty doing it. Mark Gatto was uh, much shorter than he is now. And uh, boy, they have come along so well. It's such an excellent program here at Forest Heights, and it's really a pleasure to see these snapshots of their program each year here on Rogers Cable TV. Okay, a free ball from the new guy, uh, number 10, Gary Pazer. There's a back row attack. Oh, no, a uh, front court attack for Kevin oh. Schoenk, who pounds it wow. down the line, right over the top. That there is he. such an excellent athletic maneuver there by Schoenk. Right-handed, hitting from the right-hand side of the court. Approaching from the right side, turned his body around, just ripped it line. Nice, nice pass. pass. There's a number 15, Kevin Barker. That we we neglected to mention his other excellent hit just a couple of rallies ago. Ma, this Eastwood team is really hanging in there. It's down four nothing, but but they're not they're not they're making four sites beat them, and they're having some fun out there with the winning. This going after winning rallies. There's a back set to Fillion. And uh, is, uh, Mark Gatto is just moving the ball around. It's, uh, as we've noticed, uh, Forsyth has had four siders to the row, and, and the server has had the kill every time. It's a, it's a different person every time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, the nice thing is that there haven't been too many power hits so far for Forsyth. So that means the middle and the weak side are being used a lot. And that's very unusual in this sport. Usually it's the middle and mostly the power of the left-hand side of the court that gets about over half of the sets. Another error by Eastwood, and a um, good pass there by Kelvin Hounsel. There's the back row attack again. He's on the line. Yep. This is a real tough match for Hounsel because I'm sure he's coming off a very emotional high in, uh, uh, in the semifinal match where he played so well. It was and, awesome. Uh, but it's not the same block that he no. hit against. That's a, that's a, that's a crucial factor. Yep. <laughs> yep. And it's now 7 0 for Forest Tights. And uh, when you've got two guys in the middle who are 6'5", 6'6", and who are athletic and who are well coached, it's a, it sure puts a different perspective on your hitting, doesn't it? 
You see how the entire Forest Heights team is right into the timeout. And I think that's important. People on the bench like Jeremy Steinberg and Phil McKee and so on, who may not see the four otherwise, maybe as their careers uh, go along, they will. And it's important for them to be in the timeouts, to hear and see what Coach Pavin is instructing his uh, players to do so that when their turn comes, they're not overwhelmed by the process and they can concentrate on performing the skills that have been drilled into them throughout the years and years of practice. It is now 7-0 for East uh, for Forest Tights as um, Mike Fillion back to serve. He scored a lot of points in the first game uh, and, uh, as well. It's a tough rotation for Forest Tights. There's a free ball coming out of from, of, I don't think it's gonna be a free ball at all. <laughs> Looks like Calvin, Calvin Hansel has lost a bit of his intensity. It's now 8-0 for, for um, I, uh, Forest Heights. Good pass from Calvin. There's a middle attack for, to Kevin Barker, but Warren McRae, that was too slow in developing uh, against a good blocker like McRae. Yeah, it really was. Uh, you know, the, uh, the telltale sign is to look into the eyes of the Eastwood players, and uh, they're tired, you know? They're really playing their hearts out there, and like, they oh, are great just... hit, Mike White. Oh, that is a nice hit. Mike's had a couple of nice uh, strokes uh, in this match, especially in this game. But they're playing their hearts out, and geez, everything they do, it's coming back at That's them, right. and they're being out-executed. And that gets frustrating. I mean, gee whiz, these guys are like 18 years of age and younger. They're playing in front of 650 uh, people here at uh, the Forest Heights gym tonight. Boy, that gets frustrating after a while. Oh, a nice touch by uh, number 18, Sean Crane. Uh, Mike Wade had to go a long way for that. Again, uh, the set was really tough for him because he, he, was, he was tip coverage, and then he had to come all the way outside. I think Rob Spetko knew that. That it, that it was not a good choice. It's difficult under these conditions, though. Warren McRae back to serve. 9-0 for his tights. Another excellent pass. He tries for a tip. That was a good, that was a good try by Rob yeah. Spetko. It really yeah. was. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that was a good idea. It may or may not have worked when it got over the net, but uh, at least to uh, have the uh, front row player on Forest Heights respect that. Middle attack to Sean Crane. Nice hit back into one by uh, number 18, Sean Crane. You know, the uh, thing there is, even though there's a mismatch, if you will, between Dave Money and uh, uh, Sean, Crane. Sean Crane in the front row, if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, man, the advantage is with the hitter. 100% of the time, the advantage is with the hitter. You can have, like, the greatest volleyball player up there trying to block you, but if you're one-on-one, -on -one, you can work your way around them, and that's what happened there. Oh, nice, nice try, says Mike White. Hits a, a back set. Again, Rob Spetko is, uh, is running a pretty decent offense here. And uh, and like I say, not many teams have been that successful against Forsyth this year. And, and I like the way Eastwood's really hanging in there. This is a good team. And it's a big team. I, this is, this, uh, they're, they, they're going to be dangerous. Rob Spetko got the ball up there, but it was a net fall on Sean Crane. And it's 10-0 uh, as uh, Chris Boyd going back to serve. Well, for the effort that Eastwood has yeah. uh, put up this evening, I think it is going to be coming to a, an end soon. Um, Forest Heights, uh, you notice Forest Heights haven't made too many substitutions, and I think that's important. Uh, if you're going to march along to Asa, like Coach Pavin wants his team to do, um, he's got to have those six people out there and go through a lot of these experiences where they played really lousy in the first part of this game, but have come back, and now they have to have the right amount of killer instinct to put this match away. Can't take anything for granted. Can't make any fancy plays. Mark Gatto is just absolutely fearless. Did you see where he was to play that dig? And he yeah. got, he's got three in a row up. And Warren McRae moved behind that ball. It is mo I would like to take this tape and maybe send it to most of the other schools where uh, Calvin Hounsell had just run rough shot over the backcourt. Mark Gatto has, dug, has had three balls hit at him and he's dug them all and he's absolutely fearless. It's just a, it's a treat to watch that. I mean, this, this kid's a, a setter. He's not paid to play defense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. That's, that's, that's great stuff to me. Uh, are you used to having your setter play that good defense? Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, setter in that one hole, I mean, you have a lot of opportunities for defensive plays there, so your setter's got to play uh, some defense. Jamie Ryle, uh, the number one substitute for Forest Heights, gets in. There's uh, <laughs> Jeff Boyd just fisting it back over the net. The middle attack to Kevin Barker, but it was a really, really tough ball to hit. He did the best, best he could with it. And it's 11-1. Calvin Hounsell is now in the two spot. That's the third front row rotation he's been in. He hasn't been even set a ball in the first two rotations. And I think that's probably a reflection of uh, Calvin just being a little worn down and tired. He'll he probably, really has played he'll probably come today. around into the middle now and hit a ball. See, look at the bad passing. Look where he is right now. Yeah. 
He came all the way around. It was an overnight trip from where he came yeah. from. And he still, he was off balance and he pounds it down. I mean, now that's athleticism there. <laughs> it really is. Fantastic. We've had uh, the privilege over these years of doing Wix's Senior Boys Finals to see some fine athletes. Uh, Calvin, uh, anyone on Forest Heights today, Jason Mulholland, uh, the fine Forest Heights team that uh, went undefeated and went off, uh, Sanusa Dordovic and Todd yeah. Doherty and those people. Um, and uh, Calvin's a player too. Uh, he's, he's only in grade 11. Yeah. It's scary to think what he's going to be like next year. Yeah. It's 11 to 2 now. It's now 11 3 as Forest Heights is starting to play a little sloppy right now. It's interesting they've scored two points with Calvin serving. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he's been serving quite well, uh, which is an example of the all round game that he brings to the floor, you know? A lot of players, when they yeah, go back yeah. to serve, just sort of let down and say, oh, well, I'll just get the ball over the net. But if you take that attitude, you deny your team. Uh, one of the weapons, which could be a really good, well-focused serve. Oh, like number 10, um, Gary Pazer stepped across, wasn't sure about his, uh, that was a, he tried for it, he just wasn't able to, uh, to get it up. It's now 12-3, as uh, Kevin Chong looks like he's trying to run out the string here before his tights in this third game. Oh, boy, for, uh, they're, they're breaking down. Uh, nice play there by um, Pazer to get it over. There's a step around by McCray. Good dig, dig by Spetko. Outside to the center, what can he do with it? Oh! That's, a, that's, I feel badly for him. I mean, McCray just buried him. I mean, yeah. he had no chance. Good effort, though. He, he wasn't, he wasn't bowed, was he? No, He no. went right at him. <laughs> Probably angry he didn't wipe him off. <laughs> He'll learn to wipe him off when he gets 10 years older. There's a pound by number 15, uh, Kevin Barker, out of bounds. Well, Eastwood's going down swinging, and if you're a coach, that's what you want to see. You, say, yeah. you, you, you don't want your kids to back off. They're going down swinging. This is a tough team, and they're playing an outstanding team at Forest Heights. Oh, no. Match point. It's in. Game, set, match. Forest Heights, an anticlimactic victory. The but ladies, it continues. Yeah, that's right. But we really have to say, uh, I feel badly for Chris Tippett and David Trilliving. They're going to be flat. They, they earned their way to the final. They beat an excellent Waterloo team. They, um, they're a good team. Forest Heights would have done this. To, I've seen them do this to the number two team in the province. It, uh, they played hard, and uh, and look, uh, this Eastwood team, look out for them next year. We are uh, we are so fortunate here in the Waterloo region to uh, see not only elite senior teams but excellent junior teams in their development. And this Forest Heights team is probably uh, one of the first examples of that of a team that have gone from gangly guys in uh, in junior ball to uh, now number one ranked team in the province and uh, on the brink of uh, possibly a Kawasa and Offset Championship. Paul Pev and I coached against each other in the junior Wuxa finals four years ago and he's got five players on this team right here. It's a tribute to Paul Pev and he's, he's, he's kind of on record as saying this next year is his last year of coach. I consider him to be the, the absolute best coach in the province bar none and, uh, and I've been around a lot of coaches and he did a magnificent job with his team. They started number one and they've stayed number one all year. And, and Randy, you know yourself how difficult it is to keep players at that level. Thank you very much, Randy, for sharing this time with me. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, from Forest Heights, as the Forest Heights Trojans have maintained their championship. Congratulations.